Or why don't you stand by the pool? Okay. And then I'll stand here and I'll run your slides and then you run my slides. Okay. Good morning. Um, I'm here, we are here to talk about uh, multi layer OpenStack clouds um, as provided by Sierras for KVH. So, my name is Caleb Crane. Um, oop, doesn't have my name. Anyway, my name is Caleb Crane, which you can't see there. I am a software director of, I'm a director of software development at KVH. And my presentation partner is Sig Luft. He's the CTO and co founder of Sierras. Um, a little bit of a brief introduction to KVH. Uh, we are a managed services and uh, cloud provider um, and network provider uh, within AsiaPAC. Uh, we have 22 financial exchanges. We have more than 140 data centers and 2,200 customers. Uh, we recently merged with our sister company, Colt, and we now provide connectivity throughout Europe and uh, even the US. And all of these numbers have since increased, so our customers are now over 40,000. Um, brief history of KVH. We started in 1999. We were founded by Fidelity Investments. Uh, we laid our, our first set of fiber in the ground in 99 in Tokyo. And in 2002, we uh, launched our data center services. Uh, with our first data center, we've quickly expanded out to have many more. In 2004, uh, we started managed IT services. And then in 2010, we, I was part of the team that uh, launched cloud services at KVH. So we provided, uh, man, uh, we provided bare metal servers, firewalls, load balancers, virtual servers, all that kind of stuff. And we provided in using automated tools. Um, and then in 2012, we started to expand both in Asia and in Europe. Uh, and uh, we did the Europe expansion by uh, providing services through Colt. So KVH provides the typical cloud services um, to our customers. Uh, we provide them with uh, private hosted clouds. We do that with either VMware or with OpenStack. We give them the standard services they expect, um, storage, security, all of that kind of stuff. But more and more, we hear our customers saying that they want to be able to also connect their private clouds with public clouds, like Amazon and SoftLayer. They want to have a single unified um, interface for that access. They want to have connectivity between those clouds. And we think that the best way to do that is to bet on OpenStack. We think that OpenStack is the uh, horse that's winning the race and going to keep on winning. And uh, we think that uh, by, by providing our customers with the OpenStack API and interface, they can more easily use uh, other third-party tools that interact with OpenStack and whatnot. Um, we've turned to our friends at Sierras to help us provide that. And uh, with that, Sig will talk in more detail about the Sierra solution. Great. Thanks, Caleb. <coughs> um, you're, gonna, you're able to run it? Yep. Um, so my name's Sig Luft. I'm the uh, CTO of uh, Ciaris. We've um, been working with KVH for over a year now, and we'll be launching. We good? Okay. And we'll be uh, launching our products together. Um, Ciaris provides a platform we call Cloudscape. Uh, it's essentially an overlay cloud that sits on top of a variety of clouds. So conceptually, we have this circle here where we're showing Cloudscape as an OpenStack platform that allows enterprise customers to create and define data centers or virtual data centers using OpenStack, but deploy them on different types of uh, cloud footprints. So in this particular illustration, uh, we have VMware and OpenStack representing the offering, private offering from KVH, and uh, of course, Amazon, SoftLayer being public offerings. So KVH, using our platform, is able to reach all of these uh, clouds. But more importantly, or equally importantly, is as you start to deploy data centers in a variety of locations, connectivity starts to become an issue as well. And so we've done a few things with OpenStack to uh, reach into the DCI layer so that a project that maybe is deployed in a VMware site in one location and an Amazon in another location can be connected uh, using a DCI mechanism that is tenant to tenant, uh, not just data center to data center. And we'll, we'll give some examples on that in a minute. Um, you want to go next slide? Um, this picture here, everybody should uh, recognize is just standard OpenStack framework here. Um, probably the main things I just wanted to call out were that when you're looking at OpenStack, uh, OpenStack, of course, is very powerful because you can bring a lot of uh, uh, vendor hardware into the picture. Um, but ultimately, it's about deploying an application and compute storage networking. 
as well as once you've deployed, you want to be able to monitor and, uh, and see how your applications are running. So hopefully nothing exciting to anybody here. Pretty standard. Uh, if you go to the next slide. Um, the problems start to arise when you start thinking about a distributed footprint. Whether it's uh, all OpenStack, where OpenStack is doing a lot of good things, but even in a more hybrid environment where people actually want to go to some of the public clouds. Um, things start to get a little bit more challenging and even more so if you think about what's in the middle. Um, currently, OpenStack has very little concept of multiple sites or what's between those multiple sites. And so we look at this problem, we believe very heavily in OpenStack, but we look at this problem, we see that there, there are challenges in the current status quo. So if we go to the next slide. So what CRS has done is we've built a, essentially an OpenStack platform that sits on top of a variety of clouds. We treat all clouds as, uh, we call them under clouds. And these clouds can include OpenStack, they can include, <coughs> excuse me, include VMware, um, and a number of the public clouds. And what we do is we actually run a, a full stateful OpenStack and where typical OpenStack will develop uh, uh, plugins for hardware, we have what we call um, under cloud drivers. So you can see up, uh, up uh, here that under each project, under each component of OpenStack, instead of having a physical driver, we actually have what we call an under cloud driver. So we can map a, a Nova Cinder request into whatever the cloud underneath us uh, has. In doing so, we have a common API model that is exposed to the northbound. The, uh, the user can pick and choose which clouds projects go into. And in the middle, what we show is uh, an, a, another extension, which is we refer to it as Neutron WAN. We'd like to propose it into the uh, OpenStack community. Um, and this allows us to manage the connectivity between the two uh, projects or multiple projects. But at the end of the day, uh, a user of a CRS platform or um, soon the uh, KVH offering will be able to leverage a hybrid cloud whereby they can have their projects distributed in various footprints, but it's all visualized and seen as OpenStack. So if you want to just do one uh, yep. animation. Um, so when we look at this, there's a, a couple of just quick comments to make. One is what this does to the end user is it allows the end user to, <coughs> to separate the concerns of the IT department, the, the person paying the bill, to come in and use KVH's footprint and say, I would like to have access to these private and public clouds and I'll pay the bill for it. But if you do the next step. Um, but the consumers of that IT department may be interested in using a number of variety of tools. And because we are OpenStack, none of these tools are precluded from running on top of our system. So if you just do one more. Yep. Um, so a DevOps department can come in, can use the tools of choice, can drop it onto this footprint, but it will be scoped to the footprint that the IT department has dictated or decided is appropriate for that enterprise. So we bring an element of governance into the picture, and then that becomes something that KVH, in turn, can offer to their customers. Um, so why don't we uh, go ahead, we're going to show a bit of a demo here. And what we have right now is we've made a few changes here to, um, to Horizon, but our platform, again, being OpenStack, we've tied it into Horizon. Um, I'm just going to call out a few things up here. We've introduced the uh, extra tab here we call MetaCloud. And what we have under here is a few tabs, a map view, and this gives us a view of all the physical data centers that are at uh, the disposal of the tenant. Um, we can also see on the right-hand side, we've already pre-created five different projects on five different under clouds. Uh, some are public, some are private. Uh, um, OpenStack-based, um, VMware-based, uh, soft layer site and an Amazon or two Amazon sites and we're going to focus on the VMware and the Amazon sites. So right now we're going to pull up uh, <coughs> the VMware project. So it takes a second. So right now we have a, a salometer view. There's one security group. We're going to go to the topology and we see very empty topology here. Now by pulling up the, uh, we have a little demo tab which kicks off a single uh, heat script 
And what we're going to see now is that HeatScript is going to bring up a set of um, Sugar CRM instances. We're going to bring up three of them. And as these come up, what's happening is we're actually spinning these up inside a vCenter environment. But it's all visible through here. So if we go on, we're going to hop over to AWS. So you can see up at the top there, we're changing from the type V, and we're going to change over to uh, an Amazon site in Tokyo. And here in Amazon, you always have the VPC subnetwork always there. And we're going to kick off the same heat script. No change, nothing. It all looks like OpenStack. And we're going to spin up the same um, uh, footprint here. And now what you see here is the, uh, the same three instances coming up inside Amazon. If we pull it over to the next piece, we can go over to, this, to that Amazon undercloud and we can actually watch these projects coming up or these uh, instances coming up. And you can see here there's three. The four terminated above are from a previous run of the, the demo. And now we come back to Amazon, uh, sorry, to our OpenStack and we see the exact same instances up and running here. So now we're going to click in to standard instance view inside OpenStack. Uh, sorry, here's the completed running on Amazon. And uh, we go back and here's how we see the world inside uh, our OpenStack. So there's a full stateful representation inside our OpenStack that is ma mapped down to the Amazon undercloud. And likewise for the VMware footprint. And we do things like auditing. So we will check to see that what we believe or know to be correct um, is in fact mapped below. We can do corrective action and so on and so forth. Um, if you want to go on. So we're going to go back to uh, the um, VMware instance. And it'll take a second. So we see the, the three different instances now are up and running and we'll go to the instance view. And once again, we have the same footprint running inside uh, VMware. There's a private and a public address assigned to each of these servers. We can, uh, I think we're pulling back to AWS. And what we're going to show you here now is again, common view, same heat script created it. The addresses are, are different, of course. And we're going to just enter these addresses here. And what we'll see in a second is, lo and behold, here's the Sugar CRM up and running. So this is inside Amazon. So fundamentally, we've uh, created one, one footprint that is now connecting, <coughs> sorry, is now deployed in two different clouds. The end user, as far as they're concerned, they're talking to OpenStack. They did select which cloud they wanted to go to. Um, and now we have both clouds up and running. And so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to connect those two clouds. So we mentioned that there was this um, WAN project, Neutron WAN, and so we're going to show how we connect these two different projects together. So we have to go to the administrative role. So neither project owns the network. They're both, they're effectively three different projects. And here's the administrator. There's only one security group. There's no resources applied. And what we do here is we create um, two projects. We are going to go first in and we, um, we select the type V or the VMware footprint and we're going to connect the private network. So we're going to bridge over a connection private to private, so 10100 to a 10100. And we go over to Tokyo and again we do the same. And in a second what will actually happen is we will drop two VMs on either side in each of these projects, those VMs will actually represent a, an edge point and will connect. Ultimately, this will run through KVH's network and will even orchestrate Direct Connect and their network. In this particular case, we're just doing a, um, we're just doing a, uh, a tunnel. But now we'll see popping up here in just a second. So what we've got here right now is the, a the physical AWS site connected to the physical private data center inside, um, I'm not going to say the name, um, between those two data centers. So VMware tenant through a DCI to an o uh, AWS tenant. The two sites are now uh, both connected. So 
what we've uh, so we've basically shown all the major components. This is what will be offered now by uh, KVH through their their service offering. We just wanted to show two screenshots, or, or actually four screenshots, just to give you a little bit of a, a view. As Caleb mentioned, they um, they have always offered services such as load balancing and firewall and so on. So what we've done is we've extended our platform and we handled uh, firewall. So you can define firewall and it will be deployed. This is a perimeter firewall. It will be deployed <coughs> in, um, in all of the under clouds that we support. So AWS, we have to do some funky stuff for going from VPC to VPC. So it's all done with ACLs. On VMware, we're orchestrating a Viata firewall. And in OpenStack, we have both a vanilla and uh, one based on um, Midukura. And, uh, and soft layers, again, based on um, Viata. But what effectively happens is, if you go to the next slide, is in, in Horizon or in the APIs of uh, OpenStack, it's just standard firewall as a service. So what we expose to the outside world is one firewall as a service API. And the, and the um, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, so you can have in an uh, IT department, you can have a security expert who defines the firewall policy, and it can be deployed on any of the under clouds, one, one definition. And then just real quickly, the um, network topology slide again here is showing the load balancer. So in this case, we did spin up three instances of uh, Sugar CRM. Of course, the reason you want to have that is because it's behind a load balancer. And again, we support uh, load balancer. And if you just go to the next slide. Um, we're able to, again, have a single definition. Uh, so here we have a round robin. It's all mapping into private networks. Comes in through a public network of the, fire, of the load balancer and gets sprayed across the, uh, the uh, various um, servers. So this is uh, a use case that uh, KVH's customers have been asking for. And so we focused on making sure we had this. But more interesting things that we're developing now is on top of this platform, we can now create projects, independent projects, which would be a, a uh, distributed load balancer or a global load balancer. And you could have multiple projects sprayed across different data centers and, and effectively have a, a, a resiliency model or a scale out model all orchestrated through the same building blocks. So um, that's uh, the end of our presentation. Hopefully uh, it uh, all ties together. And if you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer them. Okay, well, um, thank you everybody, and uh, hope you enjoy your time at uh, OpenStack.